Good afternoon. <laughs> um, I am out of town and have been caught up in handling some family affairs and so I was not able to hop on this morning for the live stream. So my apologies if you're normally used to coming on in the morning and you weren't able to get on in, in the afternoon. Um, replay is here for you. But uh, this is day 13. I'm trying to find a, a sunny spot because I'm barefoot in the grass and I need I needed to feel some earth and some sun under my feet. Um, so this is day 13. I'm gonna get out of the sun in a minute. I just I needed some sun on my on my feet. I needed some grass. This is day 13 of the Prosperity Plants, the Abundance Book. I am outdoors today for this one. I'm enjoying nature. I'm enjoying being outside of the city for at least a day or two. Um, but so we're gonna dive into day 13 which is also statement three. It's the statement from the third day. I am conscious of the inner presence as my lavish abundance. I am conscious of the constant activity of this mind of infinite prosperity. Therefore, my consciousness is filled with the light of truth. I'll read it again. I am conscious of the inner presence as my lavish abundance. I am conscious of this of the constant activity of this mind of infinite prosperity. Therefore, my consciousness is filled with the light of truth. So, I'll be honest, today I am a little tired. I have been <laughs> driving and running around and, you know, visiting with some family and it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. Um, reminding me of the abundance of love and all that is to offer and watching one of my parents go through the aging process and what that looks like and holding that process in reverence because eventually we're all going to go through the aging process. How we go through it, how we accept it is completely up to us. Um, but I've been, I've been enjoying spending that time and really seeing life in a different way and understanding it in a different way. And one thing that I can say, and you know, I don't have anything planned when I come on here. I truly believe that those who are children and then the elderly are, are closely connected to source. I believe that children are closely connected. I'll tie this into the statement for today. <laughs> I believe that, oh, this is painful where I'm at right now. I'm trying to get to that grassy grass. I believe that children are closely connected because they are new and they're not attached yet to their ego. And so they can see things and feel things and know things that those of us who have become attached to our humanity cannot. And I believe that the elderly also have that, that same ability because they are closer to transitioning. And so the stories that they tell of the things that they see, I ask you not to discount that or write them off as being crazy because as their bodies diminish, and soul or spirit is, is the driving force keeping them here for however long they have, the things they're telling you might be due to their connection to source energy. So don't diminish what the elderly say or treat them as children as though they don't really know what's going on because they do. And they probably know what's going on more than those of us in the middle do, like, you know, between the ages of 15 and 65 ish right <laughs> they've got a lot of wisdom in there so that's that's something I've been experiencing over the past uh, the past few days so back to this this statement and I was thinking of it in terms of relationships which is interesting as I'm speaking about fa familial relationships um, I am conscious of the inner presence as my lavish abundance I am conscious of this constant activity of this mind of infinite prosperity 
Therefore, my consciousness is filled with the light of truth. So I, I wanted to connect this to relationships because, and, and I put in a title today, it just came to me, it's like, be conscious. Be conscious of the relationships that you choose. Be conscious of why you're choosing them. Now this applies to all relationships, but the reason why I focus on romantic relationships so much is because those seem to be the relationships that most of us obsess over. Will we find someone? Can we find someone? Is this person the right person for me? How much of myself do I make vulnerable to this person? Are they going to hurt me, cheat on me, do all these kinds of things to me? Sleep with my best friend? I don't know. Maybe I should tell them lies, give them half a story about who I am. I can't really open up my complete heart to them. I will not have happen to me again what has happened in the past. We have all this story around those types of relationships. And how can you possibly build the, 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 the really authentic, vulnerable relationship that you claim you want with all of that story clouding the whole thing? Because really what you're wanting is, can we be honest? Can we talk honest for a minute? Like honest, honest. What a lot of us want is a very open, vulnerable relationship. We want to feel that heart and soul connection. You know, we want to know that that's our person. And we want them to be the vulnerable ones. We don't really want to be the ones to give up a little bit of that armor around us because we don't want to get hurt. And what we figure is, if they're all in and open, then I'll be open somewhat. And if they're still all in an open, then I'll open up some more. And the more they, I see that they're open, the more I'll open. But I'm not opening up all the way. Oh no, they're not going to catch me. I'm not about to put my whole heart in this to get it broken. Oh no. And if both of you are thinking that, how, 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 how is that ever going to be a vulnerable, open relationship? These things require courage. It takes courage to love again and again and again. It takes bravery to find someone and try it all over again. We don't look at it that way. We look at it as it's painful to have it not work out. We don't look at how brave it is. We don't look at the courage that it takes to go all in with love. And if it doesn't work out the way we think it should, to be able to go, wow, that was a hell of a ride. <laughs> yeah, I might have to tweak some things on that there roller coaster, but I'm gonna get on again. And, and when we're conscious, when we're conscious of the fact that as I stated the other day, when we're conscious of the fact that we are love, that we don't, we're not searching for it outside of ourselves. We're not searching for our other half. We're not searching for our better half. We're no half, we're whole. We're whole loved. If we know that that, that, that is, and we're conscious and aware of that, then we can choose our relationships from a different perspective because now we're not looking to fill a gap. We're not looking to fill a hole. We're not looking to find someone to love us because we feel abandonment issues from our parents or caregivers, which most of us are because we haven't become conscious enough to understand that we have wounds from our caregivers. And some of us don't even want to acknowledge that because it somehow means that we're speaking ill of the people who raised us and we're not. They simply could not give us everything, nor were they supposed to. They're not supposed to. They're humans too. But there are times when as children, we're not seen for the people we are, for the souls we are. Our caregivers don't see us. They don't see the truth of us. And they don't know, some of them, that they're not seeing the truth of us. And so they make mistakes. They, they shut down parts of us that are, that are, that are who we are. They, they make us cut off pieces 
of ourselves in order to make their lives easier. And only because that's what they knew to do too. And so when we're adults, we naturally, subconsciously, seek out and search for those missing pieces in other people. Because we wanna feel like our complete selves. But instead of acknowledging the fact that my mother treated me a certain way, my father, you know, treated me a certain way, or whoever the caregiver was. Instead of saying that, we kind of try to brush it off. It was what it was. Everybody was raised that way. You know, um, no, nah, I'm not going to speak ill of them. You know, they did the best they could. Yes, all that is true. And because uh, we got to stop with this either or. Like, like I can say that my parents did the best they could in how they raised me. There are some things that they gave me that are absolutely amazing. And I grew up emotionally stunted. I grew up not understanding how to feel the full range of my feelings. That was not something that happened in the household that I grew up with. And I've spoken with my parents about this and they can only do what they could do. So I can say both. I was raised in a really open household with meditation and I was kind of able to speak my mind a little bit and ask questions and you know we weren't spanked or anything there's really any punishment and we weren't really allowed to be angry and if that ice cream truck I mean it's 70 degrees out here so oh there it is coming around the corner now um, so it can be both and because because we don't acknowledge those things prime example Prime example, like I'll use myself as an example. I did not feel safe growing up. Um, you know, um, when I was six years old, uh, and I don't like I don't feel like I was I was traumatized in, in that way by, by this book. When I was six years old, five years old, my sisters, my younger sister, her babysitters did not like me. And so they would do things like you know, make me sleep on the floor in a separate room, alone in the dark. I was scared of the dark. I was a kid. I was scared of the dark. And they would not, you know, they would give her special treats and give them to me. They told me I was going to hell, you know, show me the Bible and tell me I was going to hell and all this other type of stuff. Um, you know, and I did not, I did not feel safe. Maybe it was traumatizing. <laughs> I did not feel safe. When I was in the sixth grade and there were boys who were literally molesting me, like touching me, groping me, grabbing me on places. And I, at 11 years old, I didn't, I didn't have not, like I didn't, I didn't know how to, to express that fully. And so when I told, um, like my parents knew the boys were bullying me, but I didn't know to what extent to tell them what was happening to me every, like almost every day in the sixth grade. So I didn't feel safe. When I got older and, you know, I found myself getting into, well, I wasn't really in many relationships, but I realized, I, looking back now, and it's, I did work to, to understand this. At the time, I did not know. I was looking for safety. I wanted to be with a man who made me feel safe. So if that meant that he was somebody who might have been involved in some activities, that you know you know y'all know what I'm saying if you from the hood you know I wanted that because that to me was power and safety right well nobody gonna fuck with that dude um and that led me to my ex-husband who I ignored every red flag and they were very loud flags and very bright I ignored those because I was looking for safety and I was looking for safety because I hadn't yet healed the wounds of my youth where I did not feel safe. And that led me into a marriage that wasn't healthy for either one of us. Not just me, but it wasn't healthy for him either. This is what happens when we're not conscious when we're not, first of all, when we're not conscious of why we're choosing who we're choosing, what wounds we're looking to cover up or fill in 
with our choice. This is what happens when we're not conscious of the fact that we are already filled up with love and so there's no need to find someone outside of us to fill those holes and those wounds. That we are, we are already imperfectly perfect. That that is, that is the light of our truth. When we are conscious. And so many of us are going through this world. I'm, I don't like the word woke. But we're kind of going through the world sleepwalking. I am conscious of the inner presence. As my, you know what, let me change the words up a little bit. I am conscious of the inner presence as my source of love. I am conscious of the constant activity of this mind of infinite love. Therefore, my consciousness is filled with the light of love. You are already that. Be conscious of the fact that you are love. You are loved. Be conscious of why you choose the partners you choose and ask yourself, is this person here to, well, they're always here to assist our growth, right? All relationships are here to assist our growth, whether they last forever or they're a short term thing. But check in with yourself to see if you're conscious enough to understand if this person is here in your life because you need someone to validate you, to make you feel loved and special because you don't feel it on your own, because you're not conscious of the fact that you are a source of love. Are you with this person so that they can make up for what mom or dad or caregiver didn't give you and now it becomes their responsibility to make you feel that way. Now that's their job and you put that on their shoulders. Be conscious of why you're choosing who you choose and what you're looking for. That's it for today. My nieces and nephew are outside. I don't see them often. <laughs> so I'm going to go and have a little bit of fun with them and my siblings. And I will see you all tomorrow. I might see you in the morning. I think I'll be able to get up early enough in the morning um, to come on here live, but I'll always keep you posted. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for joining. Have a, have a fucking abundant day. There's children around. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>